do it, hook these ground wires up while I have room. Okay. Uh, let's install the distributor. You can see on this distributor is a number eight that's stamped into that plastic. I know it sounds weird because we it's going to be number one, but you want to line that rotor with that number eight. Let me show you something. You see on this cat, number one is designated by a number one. And there's the flat. So if I install this cat, you can see where this runner is. Number one is going to be straight down from there. It's right on that corner of that flat. So remove that and that's where the distributor is at. So even though it's designated with a number eight, that's where you line it up and install it. On it, you're gonna to wanna to make sure you're still on number one. Hey guys, if you're having a problem with this gasket falling off, just take a little dab of grease. Put it in a couple different spots. Okay. Because you don't want to glue this one up because you might have to turn it a little bit once we get it. Once we tune it in, I should be able to get it close because I have a scribe mark on there, and then the rest I'll have to set from the computer. Okay. There you go. That's dropped in. Back to number one. Get me going. Back in the engine compartment. If you're changing the spider injection, each port is designated with a number two, four, six, and eight. One, three, five, and seven. And on the side of the meter and body, there's a they're marked seven, five, six, eight, two, four, three, one. Shoe. Let's put her together. Take special care here, guys, because he's uh, these things are very brittle. Okay. That's it. Install your new O-ring. I always take a little bit of lubricant and lube that up a little bit. That way that upper manifold slides on without pushing that o-ring off. Install the upper half. First, I have 44 and 88 inch pounds.
Okay guys, then I say 88, but uh, if you feel like you're going too tight, just stop. But uh, see what we can do. Okay. And install your fasteners on your fuel line. You got the one in the back. And these two little ones, we get a little hold down bracket. Yeah. All right, turn up your fuel lines. Now, this is another thing I did just to make sure I didn't disturb anything when I uh, put the upper intake on. I just hooked up a fuel pressure gauge. I'll let it sit there for a little bit. If I notice a real quick decrease in fuel pressure, then I know there's something leaking in that fuel injection system. So far, she's holding pretty good. But it is a used one, so you never know. Yeah, let's get the rockers and the push rods and this thing buttoned up. I just think a few more hours if I would have put into this thing, I could have pulled it out and rebuilt it. Would have been much better, but I don't want to put too much money into it. Do what we gotta do. I'm just gonna run these down a little bit. This is another hydraulic lifter, so. I had a brain fart there. This was supposed to go on prior to those two upper bolts being installed. And I just, for some reason, I thought that was supposed to go on top of the studs. But that would only make sense why they had the studs, but they put them under the studs, so. This one goes above the stud. As you guys know, you gotta, before you put this timing cover on, you gotta drop the oil pan and Kind of sucks on this. This is one of GN's brighter ideas, and yeah, there you go. Where put your crank sensor uh, piece on it? As you can see, it's a brand new one. So. No sense of taking a chance. They're only 28 bucks at Napa. So. You really 
could just go tight with these because you can't go too far because the bolts are made so you can't over tighten it and squish those gaskets out or break the plastic. But uh, they want you to torque them at 106 inch pounds. So I'll torque it. That should be pretty close. I recommend always replacing this because it is so far back there. This plastic can get distorted over the years with heat. And uh, why go through all that work and then have an oil leak? Okay, I got the oil pan back up, everything's sealed. I cut that part out. I just, I don't know, it'd be another hour on the video just doing that. So I just want to knock it out real quick. So uh, that's back up. And that's no easy task in itself. Dropping that pan. But uh, let's put the manifolds back up. What you're going to want to do here is start one in each corner. And I'll show you why in a minute. Pretty simple. Each corner one has a cutout. So it'll hold your gasket for you. I might bounce on it. Okay, another thing I wanted to highlight on was these uh, these quicken neck fittings that GM used. They are uh, notorious for breaking, and uh, or the O-rings going bad in there, the seals. You get these at a uh, AutoZone. You'll find it in their help section in the in the aisle. When they look it up on a computer, it usually doesn't come up, but uh, I found it in the help aisle. Yeah, they had it right in stock. They usually break when you try to take them out and you got to chase the threads out and all that but uh, this one actually came out for me but yeah, I just wanted to show you guys that AutoZone just want to get this stuff popped together I want to get some antifreeze in this thing and check it for leaks before I go too far and all this stuff I could still get the valve covers on so Okay, I actually got a new thermostat. I'm going to pop in it real quick. 